Hello and welcome to a portion, double portion, um, weekly uh, understanding your portion, your inheritance. And as you understand that, you'll step into a supernatural acceleration and the portion that you receive will be increased. Today is Monday, December the 16th, 2019. Happy birthday to my dad. Today is his actual birthday. I'll make sure I send this to you. Um, but our portion that we're going to understand on today is... Um, Understanding the wisdom of God and how to learn and glean from the actual costly experiences that we experience in life. And so let me even share with you, I didn't have a message as I was walking into work just a few moments ago on this post-it note. I, I scribbled it down as soon as I got to my desk. Holy Spirit gave me the message and I said, okay, well, I'm going to study it. He said, no, it's in you. This is a rhema word from God. So I marked my pages, these three scriptures we're gonna go into and pray, and that'll be it. Probably won't be 20 minutes. God, we thank you and praise you for speaking to us. We thank you, God, that it doesn't have, yes, you give us a program, you give us a plan, you give us a system, you give us an outline, but you also speak to us. You blow on us with your breath, oh God, and lead us, guide us, instruct us, direct us, and correct us. Thank you for this 52 weeks. We're coming toward the end. There's only a few more weeks left in this year, but thank you for this challenge to get an understanding of the 52 weeks of our portion. And so we just give you access, Holy Spirit, to give us revelation, illumination, knowledge, insight, and wisdom, 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 and grace, grace, and grace, and grace, grace accompanies wisdom. God, that you would manifest yourself to us even the more, even as many are closing out this year, allow us to say la, pause and calmly think on you, your wisdom, to look back over the year and see what was done, what wasn't done, what needed to be done, give you glory, honor, and praise, and recognize, recalibrate, and go forward into 2020. And so we thank you and praise you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I said, we're going to read just three scriptures. So if you're taking notes, you can write it down. We're going to go to, oh, I had to go to there first. We're going to go to Job 42. Then we're going to go to Proverbs 5. Then we're going to go to Isaiah 55. And we're looking at actual costly experience. This is a word that I found in the Bible where it's talking about our actual costly experience. I'm marking my page. So here in Job 42, this is at the end of this entire long trial that Job was going through. Um, he had been tried and tested. Um, I'm not even, that's not my message. You may have gone through, and even the flock of men prayer call, they had a message this Sunday that was saying where you move from test to testimony. So we, you may have gone through several tests. We're, we're in a season of God testing your faith. Anything that's not gold must be tested before it can be um, categorized, whether it's 14 karat, 18 karat, 24 karat. There is a testing that must take place. So your faith will be tested. So here Job was tested. Uh, many of us feel like we've been tested, pass the test. Just get, get past the money so you can give a testimony and overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony according to the word of God of how the blood of the blood of Jesus and the wisdom of God and the grace of God delivered us out of whatever it was we was going through. So here in Job 42, um, <clears throat> actually on your own, go back and read Job 38 all the way up to now. God was basically telling him, hold up, you think you're running everything? Where were you at when I did X, Y, and Z? Or if you really are running things, can you do this, 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 and this? And he's showing the grandness of who God is. That's, the, that's my summary right fast. So then at 42 verse 1, it says, then Job said to the Lord. So after the Lord showed him, look who, I, boy, let me tell you something. You think you're running something? You think you know everything? That's basically, that's my interpretation. Um, one of my interpretations of what was going on in the previous two chapters from chapter 38, 39, 40, and 41, all of this was going on. So then Job said to the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no thought or purpose of yours can be restrained or thwarted. You said to me, who is this that darkens and obscures counsel by words without knowledge? Therefore, I see I have rashly uttered what I do not, uh, what I did not understand. Many of us have been zeal without knowledge, rashly uttering things that we just didn't understand. He goes on to say, things too wonderful for me, which I didn't know. And the reference to that is Job 38 verse two. So that's why I'm saying, read it on your own. And then verse four, he said, I had virtually said to you what you have said to me. 
Hear, I beseech you, and I will speak. I will demand of you, and you declare to me. Verse 5, this is where that actual costly experience. He said, I had heard of you only by the hearing of the ear, but now my spiritual eyes see you. Therefore, I load my words and abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And so this is, this is the deal. Before I thought I knew you, but now I knew you with a natural knowing. I knew you as far as I could know you, but now I know you in the spirit realm. That's why the challenge to go and look at chapter 38 through 41 will help you to see some things in the spirit realm like we didn't see. And I tell you, I have studied the book of Job for over and over. I've listened to messages on it and I've read these those very chapters. But yesterday morning, Holy Spirit had me read it again, read Job 38. And I was like, wow, I didn't even see that that was in there. But see, that's the Mother Paradine principle, that you'll be forever growing. And what Mother Paradine said was she was 99 and a half years old when she made the statement. She said, I've been saved for over 70 years. Over 70 years, I read my Bible every single day and every single day God shows me something new. And it's not that she was reading it to see something new. It's because it's a living word and you are growing, maturing in him. So the same thing you read yesterday should mean something different today. Smith Wigglesworth said one day that you haven't advanced, you backslidden because there is no neutral, there is no stay still. Okay, that wasn't even part of my message, but anyway. So we see right here who God is and that we thought we knew him. We thought we understood. And for me, I've been walking in the call of ministry since around 1996 is when it started. I got real active in 99. And so here we are in 2019 and I thought I understood it, but I'm even getting a better understanding of it. And I'm mindful with putting my mouth on God. So that was the first one in Job 42 for us to understand that, yeah, you, you, you got some things going on. But here I want us to see in Proverbs 5, on your own, go back and read Proverbs 4. Because in Proverbs 4, it's the command to obtain wisdom. And even we all know Proverbs 3, to trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. So you can put those two chapters, chapter 3 and chapter 4, in place, and then jump here at chapter 5, and you'll understand what God is saying. He says at chapter 5, verse 2, my son, be attentive to my wisdom, to godly wisdom learned by actual and costly experience, and incline your ear to my understanding of what is becoming and prudent for you, that you may exercise proper discrimination and discretion, and your lips may keep guard and keep knowledge and the wise answer to temptation. So the point was that at verse 1, when he said, be attentive to my wisdom, godly wisdom learned by actual costly experience. Stop wasting your situation. Stop wasting your experience. And as, as one of my previous mentors said, Pastor Lorenzo Ewing, he said, don't waste the pain. If you're going through a painful situation, learn the actual costly experience that you are to learn so that you don't repeat that experience anymore and or so that you're able to empower others. I know I've gone through some actual costly experiences of what to do and what not to do. I learned more and I was saying this to the Lord as I was getting dressed this morning. I have learned more of what not to do. I said, okay, so when you do put me where you're going to put me, I know what not to do because of what the actual costly experiences that I've walked through. And lastly, I want you to see this actual costly experience in Isaiah 55. Now, because the word cost, that's what made Holy Spirit tie these two together, that it is an actual costly experience. In Job 42, we can see, I thought I understood. I was talking about stuff. I didn't even understand what I was talking about, but now I understand it. Even myself, having written a few books, I go back and read those books. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that that said that. Or look, I'm reading, I'm like, wow, look what she said. You are the sheep, Paulette. But it was under the unction of the Holy Spirit. It was the anointing that was riding through me. So I didn't see it like that when I wrote it. But now that I've grown and matured, even from that last book was published in 2018, when I read it now, it means something completely different. And I pray that you, and that, that's the word of God or the word that the Lord has had me write according to the word of God. And so here is a great invitation for us to understand. At Isaiah 55, verse 1, it says, Wait and listen, everyone who is thirsty. Come to the waters, and he who has no money, come by and eat. Yes, come by, 
priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price, simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. And so we have to surrender ourselves. I'm hearing a song in my head. We surrender it all to you. We have to surrender unto the Lord. And, and say lie in this. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to. I want you to. Re, let's reread it. Isaiah 55 verse 1. This says, wait and listen. Everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters. And he who has no money. So see, it ain't even about your natural money. He's actually exposing the spirit of mammon. If you think your natural money can get you, can quench your thirst. Okay. Um, uh, yes, come by priceless. Okay, he says, he who has no money, come by and eat. Yes, come by priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price, simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. The blessing, that's a whole nother word right there. At that, yeah, I'm not going to jump into that deep. But verse 2 says, Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your earnings for what does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me, that's a capital M, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in the fatness, the profuseness of spiritual joy. We're in a season where everybody is talking about joy, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy, how do you get this joy? You come and you buy, eat, and appropriate spiritual water through actual costly experience of understanding who God is, who you are in him, of allowing Holy Spirit to empower you and show you things and, and, and load you, endow you with the grace of God to go through the experiences that you're going through. That's all I have. I want you to, on your own though, drop down to the latter part of 55, where he talks at verse eight, that my thoughts are not your thoughts. So we must renew our mind. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And then at verse 11, he says that, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect or useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out from the spiritual exile caused by sin and evil into the homeland with joy and be led forth by your leader, capital L, the Lord himself and his word with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name of renown, for an everlasting sign of jubilant exultation and memorial to his praise, which shall not be cut off. I pray that you are understanding that our actual costly experiences, they're your portion. Learn from them. Learn what worked and what didn't work and apply it. Trust in the Lord with all your might. Trust him that his ways are not like yours and his thoughts are not like yours. And that's why you must renew your mind. That's why we come and uh, a portion ministries comes commanding the morning. I didn't know when God gave me that as my theme scripture back in 1999, 2000, that he was going to empower me to understand the principles to come command the morning. Lastly, we're going to close out here. I didn't have this in there. I just heard Holy Spirit say that. Psalm 5 is titled a Psalm, a morning prayer. And I just want to dip on that one piece in Psalm 5. Listen to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing and groaning. Hear the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. Verse 3 says, in the morning you hear my voice, O Lord. In the morning I prepare a prayer, a sacrifice for you, and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. That has to become what we're doing. We have to get up in the morning and command the morning. We're praying to the Lord. He's speaking to our heart, but then we're commanding the atmosphere and we're calling things into order. We're canceling the assignment of the enemy because they get up and command the morning, no problem. But we must to come and, and command the morning because there's a showdown between dark and light and light will always prevail. But the enemy is getting over on so many children of the light because we refuse to get up and command the morning. The devil is a lie. We will get up in the morning. 
We will recognize our actual costly experiences and the wisdom of God. And we will allow God to move in and to transform our lives. His word will not return to him void. That's why we do week after week exhortation on the word of God so that we can incorporate this word in our prayers, the morning prayers, the midday prayers, the nighttime prayers, the at midnight praise and prayer. We incorporate the word because it is your word that will not return to you void. I pray you've been blessed. See you on our next recording. Amen.